The October Apple event is now official and Apple will finally be unveiling the long-awaited 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pros. So here are not three, not five, but 10 biggest things that you can expect from these new Macs. Starting off at number 10, we have the complete redesign. And what's important to note here is that the MacBook Pros have not had a redesign in five years, one year longer than the usual four-year redesign cycle. And what we're expecting to see is a body that has been built from the ground up for Apple Silicon, with a thinner look, no more bulge at the bottom of the chassis, thinner screen bezels, and potentially some new colors too, with the one that I'm expecting for the most being the rumored new matte black color. The feet are also said to be redesigned to look more in line with the IMAX feet as opposed to the four circular feet that we have now, and the touch bar is also said to be removed entirely in favor of the old function keys. This new design will bring it more in line with Windows laptops such as Dell's XPS line, which has looked far superior to the MacBook Pros due to their almost non-existent bezels and crazy thin builds. Well now, both the 13-inch and the 16-inch MacBook Pros will be updated with this more modern look. Now, with this new design, we are also getting more ports, which is the ninth big change that these MacBook Pros are getting. The 2016 generation was heavily criticized for removing ports such as MagSafe, HDMI, and the SD card slot in favor of those four Thunderbolt ports, and I'm now happy to say that all of these ports are coming back including MagSafe. I think the port that I wanted back the most was the SD card slot, as now I don't have to carry an adapter with me. Uh, HDMI is also great to see making a comeback, although I'm a bit worried that bringing back these ports might actually slow down the adoption of USB Type-C, which really started back in 2015 when Apple added USB Type-C to the 12-inch MacBook. When you buy a new camera and a new monitor today, chances are that they will have a USB Type-C port, so I really hope that the industry would not go backwards now that Apple has. Still, having more ports is always better than having fewer ports, so I do get why Apple has done this. And speaking of ports, the M1 MacBook Pros have only had two Thunderbolt 3 ports. Now, this is expected to finally change with these new models, which are set to support three Thunderbolt ports or potentially even four. I would put my money on three as the extra bandwidth for that fourth port uh, is likely going to be used by the new HDMI, SD card slot, and MagSafe ports. But why would MagSafe take up any bandwidth? Bandwidth. Isn't that just a charging port? Well, according to the leaks, yes, but I do think that it will actually be more than just that, which is what our eighth biggest update is. You see, when Apple released the new iMacs, they also gave them an Ethernet port inside the power brick, a power brick that also featured a magnetic MagSafe-like cable which makes me believe that the new MagSafe connector that the new MacBook Pros would use will actually be very similar to the iMac one, very likely, with an Ethernet port in the power adapter too. In fact, Apple's MacBook Pro power adapters seems to have abnormally long shipping times as of late, which is usually an indication that Apple plans to release new ones. Now, aside from potentially having Ethernet built in and the ability to prevent cable trips, another advantage of MagSafe is said to be faster charging. You see, MacBooks usually take up to three hours to fully charge, so if this can be taken down to one and a half hours, for example, I think that would be such a big deal for pretty much any Mac user out there. Also, we don't actually know what's happening with USB Type-C charging, but I don't expect this to be going anywhere. I do see these new MacBooks supporting both USB Type-C and the new faster MagSafe charging, just like the iPhones also support two methods of charging, Lightning and MagSafe. Okay, at number seven, we have the new M1X processor, which will be Apple's second custom Mac chip. It will still be based on the M1 rather than a completely new design, but it will have more CPU and GPU cores than the M1. So for example, CPU wise, it is said to now be a 10 core CPU up from the current eight cores of the M1, uh, which should give us a 25% performance improvement However, I do believe that that number is actually going to be higher, as the M1 featured four high-performance cores and four low-performance cores, whereas the M1X is said to feature eight high-performance cores and two low-performance cores. Which means that in demanding apps that do take advantage of those high-performance cores, the M1X could be up to twice as fast. Now, having two fewer low-performance cores might mean that non-intensive apps uh, could perform worse, However, it will automatically mean better battery life, even if Apple does not make any changes to the physical size of the batteries, which I believe they will. Therefore, at number six, we have improvements to the battery life. 
So since this is a new chassis specifically designed for Apple Silicon support, we will most certainly have more space inside. And the new logic board is said to be smaller, uh, the cooling system will very likely be redesigned. So what I'm saying here is that there is a very high chance that Apple will be including some larger batteries in these new MacBook Pros. The 13-inch M1 had a 20-hour battery life, and I think that the M1X could easily go up to 22, if not even 25 hours. The 16-inch had an 11-hour battery life, of course, that was with Intel processors. With Apple Silicon, this could be at least double, as the 13-inch M1 went from 10 hours with Intel to 20 hours with Apple Silicon. But then again, if we consider the larger battery and the fewer low performance cores in the M1X, I think the 16 inch could easily reach 25 or even 30 hours of battery life, which will be absolutely insane. So if you need the best battery life ever in a MacBook, the new 16 inch will be the best choice to get. Speaking of best choices, check out Surfshark, our sponsor for this video. Surfshark is a tool that secures your internet connection so that everything you do online stays private, while also allowing you to browse the web from a different country and access services such as Netflix US from outside the US. But Surfshark is also a different type of VPN. With most VPNs, once you activate them, your internet speeds would be severely impacted, but not with Surfshark. Surfshark can also block ads as well as malware with their clean web feature and automatically alert you when your personal details such as emails, passwords, credit cards, and more have been leaked online. Another exclusive feature to Surfshark is Surfshark Search, which gives you real and organic web search results with zero ads and zero tracking. And at just 1.56 pounds a month and three months for free by using the coupon code Zenoptech, Surfshark is about half the price of what other VPNs cost. Check it out using the link below. And now, back to the video. At number five, we have the RAM, and the reason why I'm really looking forward to this is that with Intel MacBooks, we could get 32 gigabytes or 64 gigabytes of RAM in the case of the 16-inch model. Now, with the M1, we could only get up to 16 gigabytes, although since the RAM itself was literally part of the M1 SoC, it was significantly faster and more efficient than before, so 16 gigabytes of RAM on the M1 was more in line with 32 gigabytes on Intel. But now with the M1X, we are set to get 16 gigabytes of RAM as the baseline with the option to bump that to 32 gigabytes, which should be similar to having 64 gigabytes on the 16 inch Intel model. 32 gigabytes of RAM is said to be an option for both sizes. The 16 inch model could also offer 64 gigabytes of RAM if we are to go by some of the initial leaks, but Given how the RAM will be part of the M1X SoC itself, I don't really see Apple offering more than two M1X configurations. So 16 gigabytes and 32 is what I would put my money on for both sizes. Um, and I do believe that both of these RAM options will honestly be enough for pretty much anyone. Fun fact, the more RAM you have, the more powerful your GPU will be as Apple Silicon uses your RAM as GPU memory too. So the fourth big new feature is going to be the increase in GPU performance, which is going up from an eight core GPU to a 16 or even a 32 core. In one of our previous videos, I put together some estimated performance numbers and based on these, the 16 core GPU would outperform the current dedicated Radeon 5500M graphics inside the 16 inch Intel MacBook Pro, while the 32 core GPU would even outperform a 27 inch iMac with a dedicated desktop class 5700 XT GPU. These are some serious performance improvements and my guess is that the 16 gigabytes of RAM baseline MacBook Pros would come with a 16 core GPU, while the 32 gigabytes of RAM model would come with a 32 core GPU. Of course that I would love for Apple to allow us to independently select 32 gigabytes of RAM and that 32 core GPU option, but that would depend on how many different M1X SKUs TSMC is able to manufacture. And number three, we have the display, which is honestly getting one of the biggest improvements that the MacBook Pros have ever received, with the first one being the size. You see, ever since 2009, Apple has had a 13-inch MacBook Pro, but this year, this is finally said to be upgraded to a larger 14-inch panel. The 16-inch model is set to remain the same at 16 inches, but the bezels on both of these models will be getting much thinner. 
with Apple apparently removing the MacBook Pro branding once again in order for them to have as much screen area as possible. The second big display change will be the switch from LCD to mini LED, just like we got with the new M1 12.9 inch iPad Pro, which will allow the new MacBook Pros to have local dimming for significantly improved black levels. It still won't be OLED, but definitely a major improvement over the current displays. The third display change is said to be the brightness, which thanks to mini LED technology could go up to 1000 nits of sustained full screen brightness and 1600 nits peak in HDR, just like with the iPad Pro. The fourth display change, and this is actually an unexpected one, is said to be 120Hz ProMotion. Both Russ Young and leaker Dylan DKT have reported that 120Hz is actually being tested for these new machines. Russ Young even said that Apple is using the same panel suppliers for both the iPad Pro and the new MacBook Pros, so they could indeed feature a 120Hz dynamic refresh rate. In fact, macOS Monterey does actually support adaptive sync external displays, so it does make sense for Apple to add an internal display that can also take advantage of this. Not only that, but adding 120Hz now does make a lot of sense as we're also getting that new M1X chip, so everything would feel insanely fast, which is what Apple's event invite also seems to point at. And the fifth display upgrade is said to be the overall sharpness. The actual display resolutions of the 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pros have been found in the latest macOS Monterey beta and they tell us one important thing which is that the default screen scaling will now be half of the screen's native resolution, uh, which will result in a sharper image. On the current models, the default resolution sits in between the native resolution and the true retina scaling. As if you were to switch to the retina scaling, uh, all windows would be quite big. At number two, we are also getting an improved webcam, which is now set to be 1080p in resolution and match the quality of the M1 IMAX webcam, which was surprisingly good, not just in terms of the sharpness, but also in terms of its low light performance. And at number one, we have something that I don't think many of you have realized, but the M1X MacBook Pros are very likely to support more than just one external display, which was a major limitation of the M1 models. Now, I expect this to max out at two 4K displays, one through Thunderbolt and the other one through HDMI. Uh, but anyways, we will have a ton of MacBook Pro coverage coming in the next few weeks, so definitely make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss that. I'm Daniel, I hope you enjoyed this video. This has been Zenof Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenof Tech, signing out. Cheers.